Hi guys, welcome back to another daytime uh, timesheet calculation. So this one says that the charter party of the MV share contains the following condition for loading. Prepare the statement of facts and complete the late time calculations to determine whether the marriage are dispatch and the amount due. So here we have a table with the operation with the details of the operation. The charter party detail states that we have six thousand metric tons of cargo to be loaded and late time for loading sixteen hundred metric ton per weather working days and checks is included in this calculation. The late time clause reads that late time for loading and discharging shall commence at 1300 hours if notice of readiness is given before noon and at 800 hours the next working day if notice is given during office hours afternoon. After noon, not afternoon as in the afternoon, but after 12 o'clock, right? Time used before commencement of late time shall count. Therefore, any time that is used before late time actually starts shall be counted towards the total production, right? Um, time lost in waiting for birth to count as loading or discharging time, as the case may be. In this question, this clause doesn't uh, relate to it. It's just there to confuse it. Time shall not come between 1800 hours on a Saturday and 600 hours on a Monday, nor between 1800 hours on the last working day preceding a legal holiday and 600 hours on the first working day thereafter. As I explained in previous video, this is simply saying that you shall not count any time after 6 p.m., which is 1800 hours on a Saturday, right? So 6 p.m. on a Saturday, we stop working and then we open back at 6 a.m. On a monday morning and if a holiday is coming up on let's say tuesday then that means that on monday we will close at 6 p.m and then the holiday would be tuesday so therefore on wednesday we we open back at 6 a.m right then it also goes on to say that the merge and dispatch clause the merge to be paid at a rate of usd 1800 per day pro rata and dispatch to be paid at a rate of usd 900 per day pro rata we know that the marriage is paid to the ship owner. That's when the charter takes more time to complete loading and discharge of the cargo than what is given out in the charter party. And we know that dispatch is paid to the charter if they take less time to load and unload their cargo than what the ship owner gave them in the charter party details. So we're just going to go ahead and start this calculation and I'll try to explain to you as best as possible as I go along. Please remember that checks mean Sundays and holidays excluded. Also, I apologize for the background noise, but let's get into it. There's a time that I can get to do this video. Okay, so let's head up our page. We're going to write the day, time used, and the remarks. Okay, so let's go ahead with the details of the operation here. So we see that on Thursday, November 22nd, the vessel birthed at 1400 hours. So we're going to go ahead and write that in. Also, at 1530 hours, well, actually, at 1400, the vessel arrived, and then at 1530, the vessel birthed. This nothing started to happen here. We haven't started any operations. So even with that clause that I highlighted, highlighted before, um, look into it and you'll see nothing started to happen here. The vessel, the vessel only arrived, and then it birthed. So on the 23rd of November, we see where um, North Tendered was given at 600 hours, and then at 800 hours, the North Tendered was accepted, and then at 800 hours as well, that's where we started loading. So we started loading now, so something started happening, we started production, right? So the lay time started at 1300 hours because it says in the charter party details that lay time for loading and discharging shall commence at 1300 hours. That means at 1 p.m. Why? Because the NOR was given before noon. Here we see the NOR was accepted. NOR tendered, that doesn't mean anything to us. We want to know when the NOR was accepted. So it was accepted at 8 a.m. That is before 12 p.m. in the afternoon, right? So that's what matters to us. So therefore, we know that late time started at 1 p.m. because the NOR was accepted before 12 p.m. Okay, so as I said, um, operation started from loading commenced at 8 a.m. And the reason why I have 5 here and then I have 11 hours below is because from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m., that's 5 hours worth of work, and then I went ahead and took 1300 hours from 24 hours, which gave me 11. You could also go ahead and take 800 hours from 24 hours, and then you would have gotten 1600 hours, which would still be correct. Because on that day, Friday, November 23rd, we only did 16 hours work of work, right? On Saturday, November 24, you see here where we have normal operations, but what happened on Saturday? The late time class told us that operation stops at 1800 hours so therefore we've been working from 12 a.m midnight until 6 p.m in the evening therefore we've only worked 18 hours for the day on sunday november 25th that checks because sundays are not included in the production so therefore we didn't work any hours there on monday what happened we open at 6 a.m in the morning but it's still a normal working day it's just that we open at 6 a.m and the clause
What I mean to say is there's no clause in the charter party that says if you have rain, it should be counted as late time. So therefore, we're going to go ahead and take that out because if it's raining, no production is happening. No production is taking place at that time. So on a normal day, if there wasn't rain and we start at 6 a.m. in the morning, then we would have worked um, 18 hours for the day. But then since we had five hours worth of rain, we're going to deduct that, right? So therefore, we end up with... 13 hours worth of production for the day on tuesday it was a normal day we work all day right on wednesday we work all day as well and on the 29th which is a thursday we completed loading at 10 a.m therefore we've been working from 12 a.m 12 a.m midnight until 10 a.m so we did 10 hours worth of work and we go ahead and we calculate that so we have two days 57 hours all right that's it you know that we cannot have 57 hours so we have to go ahead and divide that by 24 and then that that then gives us 2.375 and then we're going to go ahead and add the two days that we have to that and that totals to 4.375 days so then we're going to have to calculate the amount of late time that they gave to us right how long did they give us to complete the work so we're going to take the 6,000 metric ton of cargo that was given to us and then the 1600 metric ton lay time for loading and we're going to go ahead and divide that and that gave us 3.75 days that should be days so you can go ahead and put this right there therefore this means that oh remember i said when you're doing lay time always take the smaller number from the bigger number you should never in your life have a negative figure when you're doing lay time so go ahead take the smaller number from the bigger number and you get the um the total which is 0 0.625 so therefore what happened here this question is one of the marriage because we took more time to load or unload than what was given they gave us 3.75 days and we actually took 4.375 days so therefore us the charter or just say the charter themselves oh the ship owner um some money so because the charter party says that the mortgage should be paid at eighteen hundred dollars per day pro rata we're going to go ahead and take the sum which is the 0 0.625 and times that by the eighteen hundred and the answer that we get which is one thousand one hundred and twenty five dollars that's the amount of money that should be paid to the ship owner because we owe them the mortgage i'm just going to keep repeating this in all the videos um the port operates on a 24 hour basis so if you're wondering where i get where i'm taking the 24 hour from the port operates on a 24 hour basis everything that we're calculating we're going to take it from a full day which is a full 24 hours